thank you so much for joining us today to Rendezvous with French Cinema, our 26th edition. Uh, it's our annual collaboration with PIM at Lincoln Center and Uni France. My name is Florence Elmosini. I'm the head curator for Rendezvous with French Cinema, as well as a senior programmer for PIM at Lincoln Center. So today I'm very pleased uh, to uh, introduce the director of the film you just saw, Slalom, uh, Charlene Pavier, who is with us. Uh, and we also have a translator uh, just in case we are missing a few words or uh, and want to make sure everything is very clear for the audience. Uh, so thank you, uh, Charlene. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> and welcome to the Rendezvous family for your first feature. Uh, I want to thank the distributor of the film, uh, Kino Lorber, uh, because as you may not know, but the film is a US distributor. Uh, so the film will be seen in addition to the festival screening. And that's uh, very exciting for um, French cinema and foreign film in general in the US market. Um, I wanted to maybe um, start with asking uh, Charlene maybe uh, to talk about the origin of the film as I believe uh, that it's partially maybe autobiographical, but also wanted to know you uh, started writing the, the film uh, before directing. And I think it's, a very, it's very difficult to make a film and a fiction film. So why did you think it was um, maybe the, the best way for you to convey your story? Um, certainly not the easiest way, but it's a beautiful film. <laughs> Yes, in fact, I, I started to write this story in 2014 when I entered to a script lab called um, Atelier Scénario in La Femis Cinema School in Paris. Uh, for me, it was like a, a big, big chance to enter this workshop. Um, I was really, um, really excited uh, with the idea of writing my first feature there. But actually, I didn't have an idea. I didn't, I didn't came there with the idea of this film. Um, of course, I had some um, some uh, uh, thematics in all my uh, short films uh, that uh, I was obsessed by. So, so it was really often a story with a young heroine, um, teenager or young woman under the grip of uh, drug, of uh, father, of uh, uh, oldest man. So it was always those kind of subjects. Uh, uh, and, and I knew that I really wanted to 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 dig in in those subjects. Uh, on on I was really asking myself, and I and I had some flash of uh, souvenir co coming back to my mind about my uh, my teen my my teenage um, time when I when I grew up in Val d'Isère and I did some ski uh, competition mm -hmm. on uh, on. I was like, okay, this is the 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 this is the arena. This is the the place where 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 this story can uh, can happen uh, because of the landscape, because of the ski resort that we never see in cinema. On on on, I experienced the life there, and that was really powerful to me to film that. Um, after maybe six months of uh, trying to find the right story, uh. The, the the face to face between the trainer and the young athlete came to my mind, and that was also souvenir of uh, what I experienced when I was a teenager. So it was like a big mix of, uh, it was like a therapy to write this film. To be honest, and it took me five years uh, from the the beginning, 2014, on 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 the shooting, 2019. So um, yeah, it was a big process, and, and actually. Um, I didn't really realize I was writing on sexual abuse uh, all this time. Maybe after three years in 2017, I think it was um, just before Me Too movement came to, to the world. It was before that. Uh, my producer told me, Charlene, you have to understand that you are writing about sexual abuse. And I was like, okay, bye-bye. I'm leaving. I don't want to do this film anymore. I'm too scared. So... He, he spent so much time with me trying to, to, to guide me on this really um, intimate, uh, how can I say, way. Uh, um, and finally, I realized that I was writing on that. And I realized that, in fact, it was already in all my short film somewhere, this kind of um, subject, actually. 
So yeah, it was a I can I can talk about that for for ages. So no process. Yeah, I I see. <laughs> um, but it's um, you mentioned like the sexual abuse, which yeah, I mean since. Um, since I saw the movie, but just before, there was like some film in the US about the gymnastic uh, that came about. Uh, but usually films uh, like this are like documentary. And the fact that you chose to do a fiction film uh, allow you, I guess, to bring different images uh, and projection and also to find uh, a cast uh, that change the trajectory of, of your story. Yeah, yeah, that, I think that's one of the reasons. But the, the other reason is like is, is because I really like the, the the artistic direction. I really like to put some. Uh, I I like to to shot my film like a painting, and I like to put some color scene on that. And I like also something sometimes the the fantasmagory of a story. You know, the 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 inner world of a character. Um, uh, I really wanted to explore that as as almost like a film de genre. I don't know how you say that in English. But, uh, genre film? Yeah, genre film, like fantastic, like like a fantasy world, you know. Um, um, I really, I really like that. Um, cinema for me is a is a way of uh, telling stories that you cannot see in the real life uh, because it, it's something from the imaginary of someone. Um, um, I've really explored that with the narrative film, the fiction uh, film. Um, um, I've really loved that. And um, um, for me, documentary, I start, uh, actually my first film I did 10 years ago uh, was a documentary when I lived in Australia in a hippie community. I was filming the people there who wanted to save the world. And that was like, like, that's really the first experiences because I didn't went to school and that was really the first experiences bring me on this way of, of making film but um but really the the narrative world is is something that i enjoy the the most i think and for me writing a documentary is a big mystery i don't know how to do that like and in france you have to write for for to 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 be a director and i and i don't like writing actually or i like yeah. to write subject that uh, helped me to grow myself probably it's like my therapy blah 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 something so yeah to write a documentary for me is really hard like I, I'm like how can I write the reality you know what I mean so yeah <laughs> so I thought it was a uh, order but you took the easy way by making a fiction <laughs> that's how you seem to say <laughs> Um, can you talk a little bit about the casting? Um, because I, I really, really love the main actress, uh, Noe Abita. I think she has um, uh, this, this sort of like innocence that she carries with her. Uh, she, act, she looks like younger than she is. And she, I don't know, I, I see her nearly like as a Natalie Wood type of, of actress. And I think she's going to have a beautiful future in, in cinema. I liked her in all the films I've, I've seen her. Uh, can you talk about the casting of no, uh, Noé for the, the, the lead and the counterpart with Jérémy Renier who has a role that's a little bit darker? Actually, I didn't do any casting because uh, that's not, <laughs> I like the, 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 the spontaneity of uh, meeting of you want someone, you don't know why, but something is a bit from the cosmos, you know, bring you to a, to an actor. Also, it's a bit like that with uh, with uh, Noé. Uh, of course, I saw her in 2017 in Ava. I was in Cannes looking for a distributor for my film that I was writing. And I was also working on a short film called Odal Gori, uh, who is a bit uh, exploring a bit the same uh, stories at Slalom, but in another context. Um, well, yeah, when I saw Noé, I saw a girl like a child and at the same time a big maturity on, on a, um, a woman and on the, the, the big black eyes and on something really wild and really shy and at the same time lots of contradiction of who she was and that's what I, I, I wanted to find for Slalom and that's how I am actually. of course as well I'm lot of contradiction in my personality and I think we 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 met um, and it was like um, yeah something really really magic and we, we are like sister now like we spend a lot of time together and 
on, when we didn't have to talk so much. Like we met and we knew what we were telling, uh, story we were telling to the world. It was something really, we didn't have to talk for ages. We didn't really study something. You know, it was, it was really uh, spontane. Uh, mm -hmm. um, and for Jeremy, is exactly the same. Jeremy, I, I knew, of course, his, uh, his work and I, and I loved him so much in many films because what I like is uh, he always had something with the body language. He's, he's uh, doing a big metamorphosis of, of who he is to be someone else and to, to, to become a character. And I, and I really like that. Um, I, I started myself, I did a, a theater school in London called, called um, School of Physical Theater. Uh, it's a Jacques Lecoq school and I use the body a lot. And that's, that's uh, really important for me to, to, to tell emotion and to, 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 yeah, to bring emotion on, on story with no words, with just the body. I like when actors engage everything, like really a, a, a performances, a bit like the American way of, uh, of, um, of uh, working for an actor, actually. And Jeremy, I knew he has that. Yeah. And I just sent him the script and he said, okay. And it was the same. We were like, just really really magic you know the, the 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 meeting between us three we were like like a family on the set um um yeah we didn't have to talk so much like uh, it was really really easy and uh, um really nice to 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 work all together did uh, noe to ski at all or is she she has someone skiing for her no in fact it's, this is this is a uh, the secret is, <laughs> yeah no because we so i i she worked for me for the short film first other mm -hmm. body on on straight straight after the first day of shooting i knew it was something really strong between us and she could play Liz in uh, in slalom but uh, i wait the end of the of the shooting of the shorts and i asked her no way I, do you want to 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 keep working with me because i'm 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 working on a feature film and uh, it's it's almost ready and and you will be perfect uh, but but sh she's a skier so have you have you been skiing before and she told me yeah of course i've been skiing when i was a kid and i love skiing that's so good and i love the mountain i was like oh my god that's synchronicity i went to my producer and i was like that's a big synchronicity that's the cosmos i'm really like that that's something i knew it was her it's her that's perfect <laughs> blah 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 on um, two months before the shooting of the future film i call her and I say, no way, that's now. Like, uh, we are going to shoot the film, you know, in like two, three months. So let's go to the mountain and we are going to ski and talk about the character. And she told me, Charlie, and I lied to you. I never ski, I never ski. But, you know, I'm, I'm going to try to do something. And I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> in three months, we are shooting the film. And that was like, oh, my God. So, so... Elaine Dublure, how, how can I say the let a stand? Me, a stand. So, so I, I decide to stand there. Uh, that's that's how we say. <laughs> wait, wait, use a stand? No, no, no. Not no. Ah. find someone to find. Ah, okay. <laughs> so, um, so, 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 on, on it works really well. And actually, we find two other skier to play for her when uh, when the character is skiing, but. Uh, for me, it was really important that uh, she looks like a skier and she mm -hmm. behave like a skier because it's really, really specific to be a skier. Like the way you walk in the mountain, the way you take care about your ski, the way you, for example, me, I'm a skier. And, you know, when I put my ski boots and I walk on the street in Val d'Isère where I grew up with my ski, I feel like invincible on, on, I know that all the people who are from there know I'm a good skier, just seeing me walking on the street, you know, it's something like how you, you walk like a boy, you, you are really like concurrent, you know, and you look at the mountain and it's something, the way you put your ski, everything, you know, it's, it's a lot, a lot, a lot of details. So I was really afraid for me, it was really important that she, she walk, she to become this skier girl. So I, I, I told her, okay, so we have no choice. You are going to go two months there alone with a ski coach and you will 
you will learn, you, you have to become a skier. So she, she went there alone with a girl called Emily Socha, who is a ski coach. And she, she was uh, going to the swimming pool every day, running into the snow every day, uh, putting ski boots every day, walking in the mountain, on, on watching ski video, on doing the proprioception, on, on musculation, on everything. So she really lived like a young skier, ski athlete, actually. Um, 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 that was really, really important for me that uh, she, she, she felt the, 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 you know, the atmosphere of the mountain, the, the mountain life, which is really different than a city life. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I'm, uh, I was very touched by the physicality that she brings to this. That's what I thought she was a real skier because she does, uh, yeah, she carries herself as a skier. And, and it's true, there's not a lot of ski film in general, uh, you know, this, it's very rare. I think it was shot in Les Arcs, maybe. Yeah. Um, Les Arcs Val d'Isérentine, yeah. Yeah, and it's just um, the, the way she carries this and the way it's filmed around, that does bring a lot of authenticity to the to the film, to the character and the development of the story. Yeah. And um, and that really worked for me. I was really entranced by, by this and, and the synchronicity of, of both. But it's funny to see that uh, Noé did lie about her skiing uh, experience. Yeah. <laughs> it's not something you can lie for forever because at some point <laughs> they're gonna know you can't do it. Yeah. <laughs> no, but she did. She did an incredible uh, work to 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 become this character. That uh, she worked a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. And I think that was her first role where she worked uh, uh, autant, maybe. Mm -hmm. as, as, as much, yeah. yeah. Uh, she worked a lot, a lot, a lot. And, and right. Before, I think, for the other role, probably she came as she was a little bit. Mm -hmm. And here, she really, it was really a composition, uh, a performance for her. So, um, yeah, she, she, she was incredible and she was really concentrate and on, on, on the set she was like an athlete you know mm -hmm. really focus on um she's like that she can be really really professional really uh, she was Liz she was really Liz and that was really important for me to, to approach the the, the 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 work like that because that's how I learned when I was in theater school in London uh, in physical theater that's how you learn how to play you have to stop thinking and become the, the character. And after you can do anything, you know, and mm -hmm. the character is guiding you. You don't have to think about what you are doing. And that was really the, uh, the idea. And that was, that was funny because in the same time, Fred in the script uh, asked her to do the same. Uh, is, is, yep. You have one dialogue when he so, told her, okay, you put your brain on the side and you just go. And, and that's a bit mm -hmm. the same uh, experiences that I asked. I was asking her before, before um, to, to prepare herself to play Liz. So, mm -hmm. uh, so we were really in, uh, and Jeremy did the same because uh, I, I don't like to talk too much to the psychologic uh, behavior. Uh, so I told the same to Jeremy. I told him, you have to go there for at least two or three weeks. Um, I will find you a, a coach and you will just become who is who find the, the, the key to to yeah to to be his, uh, this coach so that he, he did that as well that was i think that's the best uh, preparation if you really want to to play with actor who are not actor anymore but who are the the, the character mm. Um, so the so way like Lee's uh, story, it's like she's um, she has to build a new family and a new life for herself because obviously her parents are not present. Uh, she starts a new school, like a ski school that's very intense and she doesn't know anyone. She has a new coach, like a sort of new friends. Um, but it's, it's, she has to slalom her way into building a new life around her and she has to be very strong. And she, she carries this, um, this intensity also in how she approach people. And I, I thought that was a very beautiful way to create the character, even though she's uh, you know, a character, she seems real. 
if you like the, the film is a slalom she she slalom but she slaloms her way into building a new family too because yeah. she does she she leaves her family behind she doesn't really have any solid ground she has to exactly. to create herself uh and and to find a way to move with people to trust people and and to go in that direction which leads to the next part so can you maybe talk a little bit about that yeah 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 on on, on so also the end of the childhood and it's the start of uh, another story which is another life which is the, the the end of the teenager or the middle of the teenager but you have to become an adult and you are she's uh, she has to be responsible, she's living alone, she has to wake up at five in the morning to be at the right time at the training. She has to take care of her body, take care of her muscle, eating some powder of protein. And she's like, and in fact, she don't know how to do all that. She don't know. Um, um, that's, a, that's a really true story because uh, I've been a skier and I know a lot of uh, young skiers who are in clubs like that, ski clubs and training a lot. And, and most of them, they are alone and they are 14, 15 years old and they live like, like 30 years old people. They have to, they have mm -hmm. to live like that. They have to, you know, and, and often in the ski resort, the, the parents, they don't have time. They work a lot, they work a lot. They are, they are, uh, they are most of the time they have um, shops and you know it's it's open every day you don't have weekends you know for the all the season so so the kids are really they have to they have to take care of themselves alone and you have also the, the other option the, the option the option i choose in in my script is that uh, you have some kids who don't come from there on on, on people parents they are your flat to 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 so they can they can train and, and they, they it cost money and they are not here because they have to to work uh, where they live and that's that's really a reality you who push the other reality which is when you are 15 years old you enter another world the, the adult world so i think all those pressure because they are pressure actually the the loneliness the the responsibility of that just just move you really quickly too quickly uh, to another world when you are not prepared to to face that if you are not definitely on, on yeah it's definitely too quickly i mean especially for her she doesn't have the resistance and the natural uh, instinct that will protect her from uh, the sort of relationship she will develop with a coach you know uh, she, she, she don't know what what is love Mm -hmm. So at one point she thinks that she's falling in love. That's love. That's how he has to be. On 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 at one point she says, "Well, something is maybe wrong because that's true that normally Max should be my 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 boyfriend. You know, Max the the, the yeah, the so young guy, yeah. guy is with there. But in a way, why not? You know, nobody is there to to telling her that something is wrong. So she don't know. That's why she's she's going back to him to Fred." Even mm -hmm. if on, on at one point she realized that something is wrong because her body is, is telling her it hurts. I, 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 something is, you know, it hurts. So mm -hmm. I have to re react to that. But before the, the body signal, the body signal of, uh, of healing, no, not healing, la douleur, quoi. Pain? Yeah, of pain, the, the, the body signal of pain. She don't know. She. I mean, but the, the scene when they're like um, they're on the ski lift at night, uh, and they're like, he says, "There's a wolf. If you see the wolf, it's a sign." Mm -hmm. It's it's a romantic scene in a way, you know. If that's how she could fall for him because it's it's beautiful. They're outside at night, you know. They have a very close, intense relationship. He gives her all the attention, and she reacts to that. And it's it's a, it's a context of a a girl would fall for a boy. Uh, but of course. Um, a lot and of she, she feels so special. She feels so special. This is a magical moment. And, and she will probably uh, remember that all her life. She will probably forget the, the sex. Yeah. And maybe it will come back to her mind uh, 20 years uh, later. But the, the, the wolf scene and all that, you know, is something... And it's uh, it's like uh, in the story you read to the kids, you know this kind of um, situation. So, well, so yeah, it's a mix between uh, 
between reality, dream, uh, projection, uh, idea you have of something, but mm -hmm. uh, on, on also um, realities that nobody told you about to take mm -hmm. care, to be careful, to ask yourself, do you want to do that? Um, you is it good for you or not what's allowed or not and that's this film is uh pointing all those points like this is not enough clear we have to clarify all those points this is not allowed this is good this is not good this is you have to talk to the people to to the to the to the young athlete around you to your parents to the to the director of the school, to the trainer. We have to talk, this is right, this is not right. How do you feel? You know, all that, we forget that. We forget that because sport become like something that with no rule, another world, with everything is uh, permitted. You know, just because, just because you have to, to have the medaille and you say, okay, I'm representing France in the Olympic Games. So everything is allowed, we don't care. But that's not possible anymore. We have to, on this film, I did it as well to, to what I wanted to, to say, it is not only the fault of Fred, it's also the fault of a system. And that's why I didn't paint him as a serial abuser. He's someone good at the beginning, but he's going to fall himself because he don't have getting also, you know, well, that was really important for me to, to, to say that in, with my film. It's a, it's a big societal, uh, um, I'm gonna say, yeah, well, five. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, I wanted to ask you also about uh, the cinematography of the film uh, because it's it's uh, it's really beautifully shot, and I wanted to know if you could tell us a little bit about your collaboration with a uh, cinematograph, uh, which I think it was Yan uh, Yan Marito. Yes, mm -hmm. yeah, it's a big uh, story. Yeah. <laughs> It's a big so, love story. No, we are not in love. Another we one? Not, no, 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 no. But we are like uh, love in a professional. Uh, when I, we are in love with the with what, what we do together, and that's a ten years collaboration. Uh, I'm I met him in my first uh, short film in 2011. Um, I knew nothing, and he came like that one day before the first day of shooting. The, this film is called Free Fall. It's also a story, a bit the same story because I, I retell all the time, all the time the same story. Anyway, on uh, on um, yeah, it was really like a good food, uh, a professional good food. Like we were um, really all, all the time, um, um, really exciting about uh, what we were doing and trying to do on on the dream we had about colors about. Uh, uh, frame about on uh, on um, um, and we really grew up together. Jan and me uh, for ten years. He did all my short film, so maybe six films together, shorts. On um, on um, um, of course before before slalom, he did other few film because he was working with other director. Even if I'm really hungry when he's going to work with other director because it's my DOP, you know. It's like I'm really, I'm really jealous, you know, of when he's working with. So he told me sometimes he told me, "Don't worry, Charlene, I don't want to do other thing. I I just want to to work with you, you know. Don't worry, I will, I will not do, I will not work with other people. But he's doing, of course, and it's good. <laughs> anyway, um, so I think we explore, we explore different method on different way of filming in in the shorts. For example, in Omesa. We were trying something much more stable with a lot of traveling, trying to to suck the emotion of the character with the traveling and with a, a really uh, stable camera. Um, after we we look at this film and we were like, we miss the life, the energy. So we did other gory with the camera, which is always um, in moving with the character. And we were really radical. We were like, okay, we, we love, to try radical choice. So we were like, okay, we we will stick on her all the time in other go all the time, all the time. We don't we don't give a shit about the, the rest. We just want to to live with her, to breathe with her, to 
and, and after we were looking through the gray, I was like, oh, that's interesting, but we miss the landscape. You know, that's, that's a shame because we shot a Dolgore in, in Basque country, which is really nice, the whole show. Yeah. But like, okay, so in Slalom, we tried to, to, to mix all those uh, methods that we, we, we explored together. But, uh, but we really like to be radical, as I say. Um, um, I told him in Slalom, I want to be all the time from the point of view of Liz. That's a rule that I told to all my team. That's really something we, I really want to try. And we tried that on Odolgori and it was working, but I was missing the landscape. But I was asking myself, how can we shut the landscape within like, like, but staying with her, it's really hard because in my mm. head, she had to be all the time in the frame. So we say, we, we we choose the camera and the optic and everything, trying to 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 see how how can the mountain become the soul of Liz, become maybe a dialogue with herself, mm-hmm. like she's looking the mountain and in fact she's asking something to herself, what is happening to me, what should I do now? When when the mom, for example, told her for Christmas I will not be here, she's going out of the car and she's looking at the mountain and she's like. What should I do now? And I think the mountain is telling her at this time, you're going to ski and you, have, you are going to become a, a pretty good skier. Mm-hmm. Doesn't matter. So she's taking the, the strength with the, this look to the mountain, for example. So anyway, so that was a um, lot of um, a thinking to, to be really uh, intense with the mise en scène and with the way of uh, placing the camera and, and everything was really we think but every everything and we don't have time because we had five weeks of shooting less than one million euros so you know when you don't have money you have to have idea <laughs> so that was really the, the the target and we enjoyed that really much so well, yeah, he's a, he's really, 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 really good uh, cinematographer. Good person. He's really young. He's thirty-three years old. Really talented. Um, uh, it's a uh, yeah. I'm, I encourage every director to work with him, <laughs> even if I don't want to <laughs> leave him. To it's a sort else. of semi encouragement. <laughs> they can, but you know, but maybe not. Yeah. But it's a way he works with the color, also the palette of colors. Um, it's really incredible in the film because it does match Liz and Liz's emotion. The way it goes to cold, to hot, and cold. Uh, uh, so it's uh, it's internal and external. And, and yeah, I think he's, he's, yeah. he's a good cinematographer. That was really important for me, the colors. And we, he helped me as well to probably tell a story because I don't really like the writing, the thinking. I like the doing it. I like the color. I like the frame. I like the actor. I like the, the making it. You know, I don't really like the thinking it. So, so the color is also a way to theorize. Theorize. Theorize, yeah. To te- theorize a, an idea. And it helped me to, to make it real. And the blue, the red, complementary color. Uh, my mother is a painter, and she, when I was uh, young, I was painting a lot, and she, she learned uh, me a lot the power of the color. What mean the red? What mean the blue? What mean the, the complementary color? Um, on why Kandinsky is using the yellow? It's a musicality of uh, something. You know, you don't know it, but you feel it. Yeah. And that was really important to to use the color as a um, magical tools who can probably work on, on manipulate a little bit the audience on what I wanted to to make them feel with Liz. Um, um, yeah, we work a lot on the costume, for example. The, the, at the beginning of the film, she wear pink, light pink uh, clothes and, and more you go, more the, the clothing of Liz are, are becoming uh, British, uh, like uh, Bordeaux and on, on, on when you arrive to a um, climax point, uh, when she run to the forest, she has a pretty red sweater and you have all that. You know, sometimes I, I think people don't really realize that, but in a way, 
you know, you, you see this character in red is not the same that seeing this character in light pink, something happening between between Lee's and on the audience, I think. So, uh, yeah. I, I don't think, not everyone will necessarily notice right away the yeah. color, but it's the impression of all that yeah. it makes on the audience, uh, how you reflect on the, on the development of the character and the, and, and, and the story overall, but that works, so that, you need the detail. That, yeah, and I think the Americans do that so well, the, the art direction, on, on, on I like that so much in American film, you know, the, the, it's this efficacy on the art direction and everything is there to, to bring you somewhere. And, mm. and that's so good. And in France, I think we are really bad on that. We are really shit, actually. You know, sometimes <laughs> the film are not, if, no efficacy and no art direction. And, and I really like American cinema for that because they, they are going there, you know, with all, everything they have. And you have colors, you have, you have, you have, uh, you have a lot of stuff to play with when you are a director, so. <laughs> well, but something else I think you did really well in the film, but it's not always uh, as successful in French cinema. It's the use of uh, music and the soundtrack. Mm. Uh, if you compare American cinema and French cinema, I think usually American cinema is uh, a much uh, subtle uh, development of using the, the soundtrack yeah. and the score. And in this film, I think the, the score and the soundtrack are really excellent and, 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 and very uh, um, moving emotionally too. So you, I think you work with uh, Low Entertainment to yeah, yeah. the music and, and the finger really good. And it, uh, maybe you can talk a little bit about the, the yeah. music. It was, I love them too much. It, it's really good because they are three. So mm -hmm. it's three brains, three artistic touch, and they, they are doing a lot of proposition, uh, which was really interesting and good because it was really hard to find the good music for this film. Mm -hmm. uh, because I, I love the romantic, Romanesque movement, and I, sometimes I was thinking of really classical uh, music to just move everybody, you know, with her. But it was too much in a way. On, on, on a, I also wanted something more modern, um, on something more the music I listen, which is uh, Pink Floyd. On the uh, for me, I, that's my big bands, you know, big references for me. So I was like, sometimes I was talking to them about Pink Floyd, and after I was talking to them about Chopin. So we were like, oh my god, you know, <laughs> it was like really hard to find a good mix between those two. Uh, um, music style but uh, I think we yeah we, 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 we walk a lot and they walk a lot and, and, and they are not a classical uh, band they are not so good in Chopin so I realized that that was not what I wanted either but we keep the melody which is a little bit uh, from classic, classical style and we, we bring it to something more deep and more modern with the, 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 the electric guitar, a bit like Pink Floyd. And also it was a, a reference of the, the picture of the film, which is a really 80s, like 80s style, the, the frame, the picture, the camera we use is a really old camera, really cool optic, because I don't like the, the, the picture when it's too polish, when it's too, um, you know, I like when it's a bit like the, 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 the 35 millimeter um, type of, uh, images more um, uh, Maybe. with some grain you know yeah yeah and finally we on on this film slalom it's because it they never use telephone of really a few times you know but you don't have all the iphone because i don't like that either mm -hmm. so i was stuck in my 80s probably on on, on uh, it needed to be like a bit universal like you don't know really when this story happens now mm -hmm. or or 20 years ago, you know, doesn't matter. So we had to, yeah, to, it was a, it was a big, uh, big walk actually to, to, to find the, the good music. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, I don't know if I have time to ask a last question, but I wanted to ask you about the final scene in the film uh, with Lee's uh, winning and walking away. It's a very strong ending to the film. And since, 
we can talk about it because the audience has already seen the film with no spoiler. So uh, can you uh, discuss a little bit uh, the writing and directing of that moment? In fact, I add this end from the beginning because uh, the end of Odal Gori, uh, my short film, was actually a bit like a lab for Salam, uh, was also something like that. Not exactly the same because at the end of Odal Gori, she asked the guy to stay with her. And that was really disturbing for the audience, for the morals, you know. She cannot ask uh, the guy who abused of her to stay with her. But mm -hmm. in Odal Gori, she is still there. She didn't realize that something was bad. Anyway, but I tried this this last shot on the on the face of this child with like completely um, lonely and, and she just want to stay with something. And in slalom, I wanted to do the opposite, but with the same uh, procedure, which is really simple just to stay in a face, in the eyes of, of the character, but she say no and she just want to leave that. Mm -hmm. um, on, on, yeah, it was um, on, on, on the no, how to say no, that's so important. It took me in my life, it took me so long to understand that I can say no, um, that's not a problem. People will still love me and um, you know, I will not be alone if I say no. Um, uh, it was really important for me to 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 show that uh, the 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 no is to learn to respect herself, and it's a really small word, three letter, two letter in English, nothing really easy to say, but so 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 important, so powerful uh, in the life of a woman or of a man, actually, of yeah. a human being. Uh, say yes, say no, because in the film she, she's not able to say no before. And that was something I wanted to show. Why, um, what's happened? Because people don't understand sometimes. Why you didn't say no? Okay, I didn't say no because I, I didn't know nothing, actually. I couldn't respond. I was like, I was somewhere else. I was some, someone else. I was no one, you know? And at one point you have to, 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 to look at yourself and to learn and to and to get the, the strength to, to, to realize that uh, with a, a really simple word that uh, I think the, the society in France are not uh, learning us enough. I think in the US is different, um, but in France, uh, we are just starting to learn and mm -hmm. to learn to our kids to, this is not, this is yet. Why, you know, all this, this, um, so yeah, so that was a big, uh, big, big, big responsibility. This ending, actually, mm -hmm. uh, I was really afraid to, 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 to not doing right because it's it was a big responsibility to tell this message in my film on, uh, on, um, on yeah, on the condition when 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 we shot that were terrible, like we were freezing and it was really hard. We were shooting this old last scene in in the same time as a real competition so we didn't have time uh, so yeah we we had a few time and it was like we were completely tired of it and that was like uh, on, in, on the same time everybody on the set we knew that it was really important and it, that was really hard how to say no even for no habita how how this actress can say just no you know it's uh and everything has to be there, you know, the, the free, the, the, the freedom that she gets and the grip she's getting rid of and all that, you know, so. Yeah. I mean, there was a few scenes where we are like screaming to her, please say no, don't stop now. And, and but she's, she, we know she's too, um, she's too young she's too immature she's just too scared to say no but we are really we are like so with her on that no so when it, it comes that we realize or oh, she's grown and she's becoming a woman and a stronger person it's it's also emotionally satisfying uh you know to to 
to follow her to that to that point uh, because the film is all about her and we follow her all around and then we're really with her uh, the entire time but uh, she's a very memorable character and uh, yeah. and actress um, but I don't think we have more time to discuss. So I had many more questions uh, about your skiing career too. <laughs> uh, but it was really great. <laughs> it was really I know, fine. The skiing career, it was very small, so. <laughs> uh, no, I'm sure you're a very good skier. Uh, I wanted to thank you for joining us today and discuss your film. It was really great to uh, be able to show the film and have you uh, at least uh, being your virtual company uh, for today. And maybe we'll meet in person um, whenever the film is released in the US. Uh, we don't know when it'd be physically, but you know, it might happen sooner. <laughs> I hope so. I hope to come in the US. I, I used to come quite often and I, and I love to, to go to New York and to California to surf. I'm a surfer. So. And, and thank you for um, making uh, such a great effort to speak English. Sorry, yeah. Mr. we did not need you okay, as okay. Much, but uh, you were there uh, as our security blanket, which is always yeah. good to have. Yes. <laughs> thank you so much and uh, good luck for uh, the rest of the, the film's career. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.